If you've got nagging groin pain, then in this video, you're gonna learn about what the root causes are and four exercises to address those root causes for long-term relief. Hey, it's Coach E here from Precision Movement. Hi, I'm Dr. B, Chief Medical Officer, Precision Movement. And we're gonna to talk to you about nagging groin pain. So the first question I wanted to ask Doc is, you've seen lots of, lots of groins in your day. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So with neck and groin pain, what are the typical complaints and problems that people come to you with and explain? Well, the first one is pain in the groin or in the you know, upper thigh and hip region. And uh, the pain is made worse by pushing off or by lifting their leg, like lifting their leg to get into the car or go upstairs. Uh, any change in direction can be very painful. Okay. Okay. And what are the structures that are affected? What do you think is painful? Is it a muscle? Is it... The joint, what's happening there? Most of the time it's a muscle. Uh, you, you can differentiate between the joint itself and the muscle by the location of the pain. Mm -hmm. And um, you can do resisted muscle testing to determine which muscle specifically is affected. Mm -hmm. uh, but most of the time these nagging groin injuries are muscular in origin. Okay, cool. So if somebody has this, what should be kind of the first thing that they do or stop doing, would you say? Well, they should stop doing the aggressive activities that's causing the pain. So don't be playing tennis and quick stops and starts. Mm -hmm. uh, you can put ice. And uh, I like ice and heat, actually, contrast. You can take a little bit of pain medication. And uh, my favorite thing when you have really bad pain is to do isometric contractions to help settle any inflammation and kind of get the muscle reprogrammed. Okay, so can you walk, maybe walk us through that, a quick one? How would, you, how would somebody do that? You could just be sitting in your chair and you could uh, put a pillow between your knees and then squeeze the pillow as okay. hard as you can. Go slowly, don't like give it a 100% contraction, right. but start in a gradual fashion. Okay, okay, so you're not giving birth, you're not bearing down. <laughs> okay, so gradually ramp it up and don't go to any really discomfort or where it just feels not right. Yeah, it may feel a, you may feel a little bit of pulling, it may be a little bit of a burn, but it shouldn't mm -hmm. be sharp and you don't want any sudden moves. You want to go very mm -hmm. slowly with it and you stop at the level where you're just feeling that kind of burn. Mm -hmm. And yeah. you'll you'll find over uh, a couple of days that you'll be able to increase the intensity of that contraction um, and you'll feel better. Cool. And how many reps, how long do they hold? What would you recommend there? I would recommend that they do three to five reps and hold for one slow breath per rep. Okay, okay, cool. And once a day, twice a day? At the beginning, I would be doing it two or three times a day. In fact, whenever you start to feel that stiff feeling mm -hmm. uh, and some pain, do a couple of isometrics and that'll help to loosen it up. Okay, so there you have kind of your, your movement Tylenol, <laughs> so to speak, that you can use. And I found that as well, isometric activations. Um, tend to just take the edge off. So if you're at a seven out of 10, let's say, do some isometrics, you might get down to like a five or a four. Um, but doing that, you're again, addressing the symptoms, not necessarily the root causes here. So that's what we wanna talk about a little bit now. What are the root causes of nagging groin pain? Because a lot of times, if you have that, what people do is they'll massage it, they'll start rubbing their groins all day. <laughs> <laughs> they'll do the ice or stretching. Stretching is something that's really common. See people do the kind of lunge stretch type of thing. And that's something that I wouldn't recommend. What do you think about stretching out a, a painful nagging groin? Uh, I don't think it's a great idea, at the, particularly in the acute phase, because you're often stretching through the part of the body that shouldn't be stretched. Mm -hmm. Right, so static stretching, that's something that we rarely recommend. And when we do, it's very, very specific, but for a painful, situation like this, no static stretching. So drop those stretches where you got your foot up on the couch or you're just spreading your legs out wide and trying to stretch out the adductors and the groin muscles. Instead, we're gonna address the root causes. So the first thing here, what we've got is SI joint and in brackets, P, SOAS, SOAS. So the SI joint, we found a study that talked about SI joint pain and how that relates to neck and groin pain. 
This study was called Groin Pain Associated with Sacroiliac Joint Dysfunction and Lumbar Disorders. It was published in the Clinical Neurology and Neurosurgery Journal. What they found was that 46.5% of patients with SI joint dysfunction reported groin pain. Contrast that with 6.8% of patients with lumbar stenosis and only 8.1% with lumbar disc herniation reporting groin pain. And it's clear that when patients who do not have hip disorders complain of groin pain, SI joint dysfunction should be considered. So that details how the SI joint is related to this nagging groin pain. And what we found is that this muscle right here is really important when it comes to SI joint dysfunction. So can you speak about that a little bit, Doc? For sure. Um, the psoas is a, a muscle that crosses the, uh, the, the hip joint itself and the vertebrae. And it really helps to maintain alignment of the hemipelvis. And the hemipelvis is where the SI joint attaches to the spine. So if the psoas isn't on and supporting the proper alignment of our pelvis, the SI joint is moving too much and becomes aggravated and painful. Mm -hmm. And we've got another video. We'll post a link down in the description or up at the end of the video. But we've talked about how the psoas, and we get into the anatomy a little more so you can see how that all functions and how the muscle orient is oriented and relates to SI joint pain. But the psoas is really important to get it working and for so many people, it's not working well. So that groin pain, gotta look at the psoas, gotta look at the SI joint. The next fill in the blank here, we got the deep hip stabilizers. And these are the little muscles in the hip, names like pectineus, obturators, what else we got there? Uh, obturator internus, okay. we've got uh, uh, quadratus femoris. Yeah, yeah. Other one, gemellus. Gemellus, the gemelli. Yeah. I always forget the gemellus. They, they feel bad about that, but it's okay. So the deep hip stabilizers, they really work to stabilize the hip and allow the femur, which is the thigh bone, to move around properly on a stable hip. And we're going to get into an exercise that helps with those guys and gets those guys fired up well. Another root cause that we found was total hip rotation. So this is like the same phenomenon that's found in the shoulder. And maybe you can explain that one to people. Being you know, the former surgeon of the Blue Jays, you dealt with a lot of shoulders. So how the total hip rotation thing applies to the same shoulder joint. In the thrower, uh, we find that players who have pain have a smaller arc of rotation. So that includes internal and external rotation. Most throwers lose internal rotation, but gain external rotation. But if they don't have a complete large arc of range of motion, they're prone to shoulder pain. Mm -hmm. Similarly, in the hip, we can measure internal rotation and external rotation. And there needs to be a total amount of rotation that the hip can move in order to protect the structures around it. And if you lose, some of your rotation, you're putting structures at risk, tendons, labrums, various um, uh, soft tissues, which can wear out too quickly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like the muscles of the groin. There'll be more wear and tear of those muscles. They'll have to do more and compensate for this lack of rotation range of motion. So this, we found another study that illustrated this quite well. This study is titled, Is Lower Hip Range of Motion a Risk Factor for Groin Pain in Athletes? A Systematic Review with Clinical Applications. And basically what they found was that there was strong evidence that total rotation of both hips below 85 degrees was a risk factor for groin pain development. So the last thing we're gonna talk about right here is this, and it started for a reason, the hip pocket. And this is a concept and a term that Dr. B came up with, and I'll let her break it down for you. So the hip pocket really is the key because it brings each of these factors, the function of the psoas, the deep hip stabilizers, and hip rotation all into play. The hip pocket is really the space at the back of your hip that allows the femoral head to be seated properly in the socket. And I equate that to a, a baseball glove uh, and the pocket in a baseball glove. If uh, you don't have a good pocket in your glove, 
the ball doesn't sit there uh, properly. And similarly, if the structures in your buttock, the muscles, the deep hip stabilizers, uh, which will affect your hip rotation, um, are too tight, then it decreases the space and makes uh, a small hip pocket. So creating a hip pocket and getting each of these uh, factors functioning properly is critical to taking the load off of the groin muscles. If you have a poor hip pocket, then you can't move properly. Other muscles have to compensate, become overloaded, and eventually break down. Mm -hmm. And these are small muscles, like the, groin, the muscles that are getting affected up here, high in the groin. They're not really big muscles, so it doesn't take a lot to overwork them. So those are the root causes. The hip pocket kind of brings it together. Now we're going to, I'm going to take you through a bunch of exercises to address all of these root causes and to help you to get rid of your neck and groin pain for good. Dr. B had to run to the bank, so I'm going to walk you through the exercises and how they relate to these different root causes. And remember, all of them help you to create your hip pocket. The first exercise is the posterior hip mobilization, and this addresses the back of the hip, making sure that the hip joint capsule and all the tissues back there give you the ability to get the head of the femur back in there into the pocket. So this helps to get the psoas activated because it gives you better alignment. Same for the stabilizers. Rotation, you're gonna see that you're gonna rotate when you're doing this, so it works your hip rotation range of motion. And of course, they all address the hip pocket. Now, we're gonna kick that leg out. Get the adductor sequence going here. Leg is right out, good posture, nice and tall. And I'm gonna drive my foot down into the ground. Activate the adductor for five, four, three, two, one. Good. We're gonna scour. One, two, three, four, and five. Okay, I'm gonna draw my hips down. Might have to crawl forward. You will have to crawl forward. Just make sure there's tension on that band. Okay, here. One hand in front, one hand behind. Sitting up tall. Drive my heel into the ground. Two, three, four, five. Good. And let's scour. One, two, three, four, and five. Okay. So that's one leg. Let's switch it around. Other leg, and then we'll be done. The kneeling sequence. Stepping in, crawl forward, good tension. Drive that hip out to the side. So I'm pushing the hip out, right out the left side there. And then I'm gonna drop my hip, hips back. Keeping good posture, staying tall, in through my spine. And then let's scour. One, two, three, four, five. Other way, one, two. Make sure you're going through a full range. Three, four, and five. Good, okay. Get back up, get the leg, the hip externally rotated, foot flat on the ground. And let's drive these hips down nice and low until I get a good stretch here. And then let's scour, okay? So one, two, three, four, five. Other way, one, two. Go real slow through it, three, four, and five. Good, internal rotation. So you might have to step out a little bit more. Internally rotate, see that foot kicking out? Let me give you a different angle here. Right here, boom, see that foot kick out, okay? Right leg goes out to the side, and I'm gonna crawl back. And get down, flex the hip. And then we're gonna scour, okay? One, two, three, four, five. Other direction, one, two. Take your time, three. Work through those tight areas, four and five, good. All right, now crawl forward a little bit more. 
Legs out to the side, chest is up, nice and tall. Okay, stretch that foot out to the side. And once you're there, you feel that stretch in the adductors, drive the foot into the ground. Okay, ready? One, two, three, four, five. Okay, scour one, two, three, four, and five. Okay, crawl forward a little bit and sit back. One hand in front, one hand behind. Just gotta angle my body a little bit. Right here, chest is up tall. Drive that foot down into the ground. Activate the hamstrings for one, two, three, four, five. Okay, and scour. Ready, one, two, three, four, and five. Okay, that's the kneeling routine. That's the follow along vid. Do that up and you'll be feeling great. Do this about five repetitions for each angle, internal, neutral, and external rotation, and you'll have mobilized your posterior hip capsule. Next up, the Sumpy Psoas Activator. Great exercise to get the psoas activated, focused on the SI joint and the psoas, and of course, the hip pocket. So here's the video from Rom Coach. The Sumpy Psoas Activation Technique activates and strengthens the hip flexor muscle known as the psoas, in the range where it's weakest and it's most dysfunctional, which is the shortened range of motion. And this is because of all the sitting we do, we don't need to use this muscle and it gets weak. Start off with a slumped flexed spine and then lift your foot and drive the knee into the opposite hand, activating the hip flexors or the psoas. From there, you go into spine extension and then you release. So again, start in the slumped position hand to opposite knee and activate while extending the lumbar spine and anteriorly tilting the pelvis. And you hold, feeling those hip flexors, feeling the psoas activating and firing the whole time you're holding. A couple tips to get it firing up is to slightly externally rotate the hip and to slightly abduct the hip. Those two tips can help to get the activation of the psoas that you want. Alternate sides and complete for the prescribed number of reps. Do this for two sets, four to six repetitions, holding anywhere for five to 10 seconds. Make sure you breathe when you're holding. The next exercise is the hinged knee flex. And this is a great one because it gets, mobilizes the SI joint by activating the psoas and lengthening the hamstrings. And it also works the deep hip stabilizers especially when you're straightening out the knee. So this technique, if you've got SI joint pain, it's invaluable for SI joint pain, but because it's getting the psoas on and lengthening the hamstrings to restore proper SI joint function, it will help you to deal with your nagging groin pain. The hinge knee flexion extension is categorized as a mobilization because it mobilizes the hamstrings as well as the SI joint, but it's also a great activation technique for the quads specifically the VMO or vastus medialis, which is often sleepy in a lot of people. You're going to do a hip hinge with neutral spine and slightly bent knees, and then you're going to activate the quads to slowly extend each knee and return. So you keep the quads activated throughout knee extension and knee flexion. Move nice and slow. Make sure you're breathing and maintaining a neutral spine, and then you hinge back up. Every time you hinge is one cycle, complete for prescribed cycles. Perform the hinge knee flex for two sets, four to six reps, and you're good to go. The last exercise I'm gonna show you used to be called the hip horizontal extension dissociation technique, but now we've changed the name. I left that up there in case anybody's watching who knows that technique from us. It's called the signpost. And this exercise works rotation, it really targets those deep hip stabilizers, and it gets the psoas, therefore getting the SI joint. So here's that technique. Hip horizontal extension dissociation breaks the movement of hip horizontal extension from spine rotation. And this exercise really fires up the deep hip rotator muscles known as the deep six, as well as the obliques 
to help you rotate the spine. It also gets the psoas activated as well. For this technique, you're gonna stand on one leg and place your hands in front of your body. This helps you to see how far you're rotating the spine. Then you're gonna flex the hip, activating the psoas, and flex the hip to about 90 degrees and keep it there throughout. Then you're gonna horizontally extend the hip, which is driving the knee out, while rotating the spine in the opposite direction. You're gonna hold that for about one slow breath while trying to get deeper into the range. Then you're gonna horizontally flex the hip and rotate the spine in the opposite direction. Again, holding and activating the muscles to try to get deeper into the range. This is one cycle, alternate sides, and complete for prescribed cycles. Do two sets, anywhere from three to five cycles per side. Make sure you hold and you activate, keeping the knee high to get the psoas on, forcing that knee out and the torso out in the opposite direction, and that really gets the core and those deep hip stabilizer muscles going, and that will make you feel a lot better and really opens you up as well. Like I said, all of these exercises are inside the Rom Coach app, and we'll put a link down in the description for you to check that out and get it on Apple or Google. When you upgrade to the premium version, you could create a custom routine for neck groin pain. You could add all of these exercises and more. So that's the ROM Coach app and check that out via the link in the description down below. If you liked this video and you felt like you learned something, make sure you hit the like button to let us know and subscribe to stay connected with us. Finally, we've got a couple other videos that'll be really beneficial for you to watch. This one up here on SI joint pain where we dive into that and how to get it and restore its proper function. This one that gives you a tougher exercise to strengthen those adductors once you're ready for it after you've relieved your pain with this routine. And finally, check out the link right here to our Foundation for Movement Longevity program, which includes a hip pocket routine and other routines that everybody who wants to move freely and without pain for the rest of their lives should do.